What's going on, everybody? So we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, we're gonna get a lot done. Um, I think we got these cars pretty much ready to go. We had a we had an issue with the sable. Uh, my brother and I went to go put tags on it and stuff, uh, get it all ready to go. And on the drive home from Copart, it did great. But on the way to the tag place, it was bucking and all the gauges were going out like it was losing power. Figured it needed a battery as it turned out. It was just uh, the terminals were not getting a good connection to the battery. So we cleaned up the terminals. Haven't had a problem with it since. We're about to change the oil. Um, a lot of you asked, has it knocked since? The video the other day, the thing knocked when we first started it. And no, it has not knocked since then. Um, even sitting overnight, starting it up this morning, um, I think it was just a thing that it's been sitting for so long and that's all that was. Uh, but we're going to change the oil. I got a Motorcraft filter we're going to put on it. Uh, my brother cleaned up this one. We'll show these cars here in a little bit before we take them down to Weird Beard and get them out there on his lot. Tim's out here busting his hump today. He's getting these things all cleaned up for us. I'm going to change the oil. He's doing a lot of uh, interior and exterior cleaning. What's up, Tim? Van is looking good. Got the Mercedes over here. Take a quick peek at her. I think this Mercedes is about ready to go. Um, I've been driving it for a couple days now. And so far, so good. Um, the only issue I've had since I put that valve block on is we had one blue ABC light come on. And that was it. Um, Currently, there's no red ABC light and there's no blue ABC light. Just every once and again, uh, you hit a bump or something and the blue light comes on and then it goes away. I don't see anything leaking out from under it. So the Mercedes is good. Uh, in today's video, we're going to pump out probably a quarter or two of transmission fluid from this. We're not going to drop the pan. We're just going to siphon it out. We got a little pump from Harbor Freight that we're going to use. Suck out a quarter or two, put some Lucas in it and uh, check to see if that helps the shutter any. We're gonna change the oil in this. There's a couple minor things we need to get done to it. But first, before we get started, I wanna answer a couple questions for you guys. So I've had several of you ask, how is this whole thing with Weird Beard Auto Sales working? Am I getting a commission? Um, how am I able to tag cars and things? Because I told you guys we we're putting tags on these and getting the titles done. A lot of you are, uh, are kind of confused and I just want to clear that up real quick. Because I now have a salesman's license and am legally attached to Weird Beard Auto Sales, I can go to the auction for him and I can bid on these cars. I can look at these cars on his behalf. I can also take the titles down to the tag agency and we can put plates on them and uh, get the, the titles brought into Weird Beard Auto Sales car lot's name. Uh, so basically, I'm doing everything on Weird Beard's behalf because he's down in Blanchard. I'm up here. He's working. Uh, so I'm helping him and he's helping me because I get to bring you guys this awesome content and uh, do what I do on YouTube. And I'm doing a lot of legwork on some of these cars. Uh, so with my brother, obviously my brother's helping me. As far as commissions go and things like that, uh, we're not gonna talk about any of that, at least not right now. Um, but for the moment, that's how I'm able to tag and title these cars and all that. We're just picking them up. I'm bidding on them through him, for him, with his money. And then we are bringing them back, cleaning them up, doing whatever needs done to get them in good shape. They're going to take them down to Blanchard, drop them off at his car lot, and uh, you know, off they go. Then he can sell them. That's how, that's pretty much how that works. So moving on from that, I guess let's get started working on some of these cars. So to start with changing the oil, I always remove the oil cap and I pull the dipstick just a hair. Give it some good ventilation to make sure the oil can drain out easily. Um, Get yourself a funnel, make sure it's not contaminated with debris, you don't want that stuff in your engine. And uh, as for the oil, we're going to be using 7 quarts of some cheap uh, Supertech high mileage 520. And for the oil filter, we're going to be going with an OEM Motorcraft uh, FL820S. And before we go any further, I'm going to pour some of this oil into the filter. Not much because this filter is mounted partially uh, sideways. So it's not the easiest. There we go. That should be enough. 
And then we're going to wipe some clean oil around the edge of this gasket here. Simple enough. Put the lid back on so we don't have any uh, accidents, which I am prone to. Now, whenever I'm getting under a car and I don't know exactly what the socket size is, generally speaking, I'll always have the right socket. If I bring anything from a 14 all the way up to a 17. Uh, so what I did is I got a 13, 14, 15, and 16, I believe, and it turns out this one is a 15. So our oil filter, I've already loosened it up in an effort to save a little time, but the oil filter is... You can't see it, but it's in the center of your screen right there. So we're going to go ahead and pull this pan out just a little bit, reach up there, and of course they put it right above the damn exhaust pipe, right? And this engine's been running, so she is nice and hot. We'll let it bleed out just a little bit. Reach back up there again. Ouch. <laughs> Ooh, she's hot. <laughs> He's real hot. Maybe reach up here with a little towel here. There we go. Dump her out. That rag is now no good. All right, now we got it out, clean up the oil off of the exhaust, and I'll come back and hit it with some carb cleaner here in a little bit, uh, just to make sure we get it all off. You wanna make sure we've got the gasket, and we do, on the edge of the filter here. Uh, sometimes those things will stick. Very simple, and we'll put the new one on, and we'll drain the uh, oil out and put some fresh in. What I find interesting is the difference in size between the original equipment Motorcraft filter and the aftermarket filter that was on it. Big, big difference in size. That's why even if I'm gonna use cheap oil, I still prefer to use a good quality OEM filter. You don't have to torque down your filters. Please, hand tighten a little more and you're good. sucker was on there. Same thing with your drain bolts, man. I swear some of these people act like you're tightening down head bolts or something, man. It's, it's just your oil. This is going to be hot. This is going to hurt. Aha. Uh -huh. I did it and I didn't get burned. How about that? All right, so we got the oil drained out. We cleaned up the exhaust with some carburetor cleaner, and we cleaned up the oil pan with some carburetor cleaner, so everything looks nice and neat. Now let's drop it down, go up top, change the oil. Okay, now we can drop her down. And fill her up with some fresh oil. Take it for a highway test drive, make sure everything is on the up and up. And ladies and gentlemen, I think she's about ready to sell.
Well, now that we got the oil changed, I went ahead and took care of this door without a, uh, boy, that is annoying. There we go. Took care of this door without showing you guys. Sorry about that. But what we did is we put some super glue on the inside lip of this panel all the way around, and then we stuck it back on. So this is not coming off, and there's no need to take this off. I don't know why it came off. Maybe just the adhesive came undone, but adhesive is what was originally used on it. And uh, we used super glue to hold that back in. We went ahead and uh, we did not super glue this panel into the door. The clips were still good that hold this into the door. We just super glued where the broken clips were that hold the actual control unit, the switch module onto this housing. So uh, we're good to go there. Oil's changed. She'll fire right up on her own and thank goodness we did not have to replace the battery. Look at that. She runs great. No more squeaking belt. We're getting close. Let's move on to the van. My brother cleaned up this engine. Got the Windstar engine looking fresh. These cars are looking pretty good. Pretty good. And thankfully this one was already pretty much clean. Just needed to wipe down a few things. We'll throw some tire shine on it. And I think this one's about ready to go. Oh wait, no it's not. We gotta pump the uh, transmission. Try to get a couple quarts out of it. Hell, I almost forgot about that. <laughs> We're not changing the oil on this one. This one just had the oil changed. Yeah. Yep, yep. So here's what it looks like when you pump transmission fluid out of your vehicle. You can pump transmission fluid. You could do this with the oil too, if you're not wanting to make a mess. But I mean, changing your oil filter, you're still going to make a mess. But um, you can actually do this right through the dipstick hole right there. And what we've got is we've got this great thing from Harbor Freight here. I'm going to show you what it is. I love Harbor Freight, in case I haven't told you guys. And they don't sponsor me yet, but maybe someday. Uh, this is like nine bucks. Nine bucks. And pumping the transmission fluid this way is kind of difficult because you're going from this big hose down to this little teeny tiny one. And this tiny one is the only one that would actually fit down in there. We tried getting the big one in there, but it gets caught when it goes around a corner. So we had to use this real tiny one. But we've pumped, uh, I'd say, maybe three or four quarts out so far. We're going to go ahead and just get the rest out. Um, we're going to put one quart of Lucas in it first and then uh, whatever else we need to get it close to the full mark with uh, regular transmission fluid, Dexmercron is what this requires. So we'll get it close to full, but we'll leave about enough room for half a quart to another quart. And then we'll go take this thing for a drive and see how it does. Um, I decided not to go with changing the, the filter and the pan gasket and all that stuff. That's a lot of work and it's really messy. You know, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a lot of work, but it's really messy. There's a lot of bolts. Well, the hose just blew off, and uh, my brother's got tranny fluid pouring all over his leg. That, that just happened. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, well. I didn't touch that one. Um, typically, this is not a messy job. Typically, it's, typically, it's uh, yeah, typically you just pump it out and pump it into your little drain pan. We got the hose run into one of those holes, and. Uh, you know, off you go. It's a completely messless job. Easy way to get the old fluid out, put the new in. Now, I understand that a lot of you on your personal vehicle, or even me on my personal vehicle, we'd be doing the pan gasket, the filter, cleaning the pan, all that stuff. These are flip cars. And there's nothing wrong with this transmission other than I can feel a slight shutter going into overdrive. It's not bad. It's not anything too crazy. The deal with transmissions, a lot of times when the fluid is, is as dirty as this is, that dirty fluid and all of the particulate matter, the friction material in that fluid, a lot of times can be the only thing keeping the transmission functioning. So if you go and you flush out all that friction material, all that dirty fluid, and you put fresh fluid in, well, all of a sudden you don't have the abrasiveness of the, the dirty fluid to keep the clutches working. So long story short, 
There are times when the fluid is really neglected in a car that you do not want to change much of the fluid. A couple quarts, uh, Lucas in particular, this stuff right here is great for stopping shutters. Um, I've used this in a lot of cars without doing a complete fluid flush or anything. Just get enough out to put this in. And if you've got a slight shutter, or even if you've got some slight slippage, Lucas is great. And you can put more than a couple quarts in if you want to, but I would never go more than two quarts. So we're going to get this done, put some fluid in it, and then uh, see if that shutter's gone. And then uh, hopefully we can get this out to the lot. All right, so we've pumped it out to where there's not much left down in there. We'll dump our Lucas. There's some real thick, thick stuff right here. And we do have some Dex Merc uh, ATF, full synthetic. So we'll pull, we're pull, we, we will pull one quart in. Tim, why don't you fire up the van? Get some of that fluid circulating down in there. We'll continue pouring and then we'll take it on a test drive. All right, guys, I'm done. <laughs> My brother's out there finishing up a little bit of cleanup from the messes we made earlier. Uh, the van, so much better. I mean, not that it was bad or anything to begin with, but I just, I can't stand feeling something wrong with a car. And uh, I do my best to make sure everything is ready to go for uh, Mike slash Weird Beard, in case you don't know that's his name, Mike. Um, I want to make sure everything is ready for him so I can get it down there and hopefully he can sell them and, you know, maybe he can make some money off of them. Uh, the, uh, the Mercury Sable, wow, man, turned out great. The, the body looks good. The interior looks good. Same with the van. Body and interior look great. Both of them are running and driving great. Took the Sable out on the highway, got it up 75 miles an hour, filled up the tank with fresh fuel. Same thing with the van. I filled it up with fresh fuel, too. Um, both of these things are just cruising right down the road man there was no weird noises no weird anything um still a little concerned about the battery in the sable i'm gonna let it sit overnight and go out tomorrow morning and see if it fires up if it doesn't then we're just gonna go and bite the bullet and put a uh, put a battery in it and hopefully that'll be that'll be it for the sable and uh hey man tomorrow is friday friday yeah friday so uh hopefully we can get those things out to mike and you know maybe he can sell them over the weekend Damn, mosquitoes trying to interrupt my video. Hell out of here. All right, that's going to be it. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to this channel. Click the bell icon to get notified of future videos. Stay safe out there. I'm real excited. You know, maybe by Monday, maybe by Monday, we'll be able to come back and say one of them sold or both of, both of them sold. So stay tuned. More videos to come. Take care, everybody. I'll catch you very soon in the next one. Son of a bitch.